Greetings everybody and welcome back to the Bond Geek Channel with me your host, the name Stevens, Henry Stevens. Everybody, how do you do? And I'm going to say this right now everybody, I think the reason that the Bond series has continued well on to now celebrating its 60th year this year is because of actor Roger Moore. In my opinion, it was the casting of Roger Moore that really saved the franchise from going into complete and utter disarray and being a thing of the past. What the Roger Moore era allowed to do was it allowed future actors to come in and do different takes, different variations on their own interpretation of the James Bond character. Because up to that point, it was either Sean Connery and George Lazenby being told to act like Sean Connery. This Roger Moore era allowed different interpretations and different styles and tones to come to the franchise. It's just something that never really was given the option to George Lazenby. So with all that being said, I'd like to pose the question in my series of what if scenarios. What would have happened if Roger Moore was never cast as James Bond in Live and Let Die? How different would the franchise have been? Would the franchise still be going? I've decided to come up with a scenario of how I think it would have happened and I'm here all to tell you all about my interpretation of what if Roger Moore was never cast as James Bond. So everybody, let's begin. Let's cast our mind back to 1971. Diamonds Are Forever has been released. It's been a massive box office success. Sean Connery, the favourite James Bond, has come back, maybe proving to a point that James Bond is Sean Connery. How is the series going to survive? Who is going to take the franchise forward? These are all questions. Can Bond survive in a new decade? Is it just a relic of the past? Well, this is now going to be the film, like it was in history, that was going to decide it. And I feel the notion at this point is, can someone else really be the next James Bond? Can we have another big star to carry on the franchise? And this is what the Bond producers have to consider at this point. I'm also going to imagine, say, Tom Mankiewicz has still been given the option of which book he wants to do. He has chosen Live and Let Die because it has a bit of an edge. Now, at this point, there were a lot of actors considered to play James Bond going forward. So let's have a look at some of the actors we know were considered to play James Bond in Live and Let Die. One of the contestants we had, believe it or not, was Burt Reynolds, but he decided Bond should stay British, so he timed himself out. We also had a very popular radio presenter at the time called Simon D. No acting experience at all, but he was very popular and people knew him and really loved him. We also had actor William Gaunt off the show The Champions. You had the actor Guy Peters, you had Michael Billington, you also had Peter Launton, Simon Oates and John Gavin. So looking at that list everybody, we have to do some calculations of what they might have done. So we know Burton Reynolds was going to be out because he didn't want to do it because he felt Bond should be British. And also the producers did for a while. So that also rules out again their person they originally had for Diamonds Are Forever, which was John Gavin. Now, after Honor Major Secret Service, we know that they didn't want a newbie actor with very little experience or a non-actor at all to play it. So I think that takes out Simon D, the radio presenter here. So that's left us with a couple of actors. We've got William Gaunt, Guy Peters, Michael Billington and Peter Launton and Simon Oates. Now, of all these actors, we know that one of their favourites for a while, certainly of Cubbies, was Michael Billington. However, everybody, based on my research, I actually believe the person they actually said, and it's well documented that they probably would have picked, is Roger Moore. Roger Moore was absolutely the favourite to be James Bond at this point, but obviously the reason he got to play James Bond was his show The Persuaders was cancelled. Now, in our what if here, this is where we're going to start the tangent. This is where everything's going to be different. I'm going to imagine that The Persuaders was not cancelled and Roger Moore was fixed and tied into the show The Persuaders. So obviously, Harry Saltzman really wanted Roger Moore. Cubby was a bit uh, here, but they can't use him. Roger Moore is not available. The one they really want, the stable, solid, reliable actor they want is not available. So who would they have gone with? In my opinion, the actor where they've gone with, and this is based off my research, this is based off what I've been reading, the actor where they've gone with is William Gaunt. Now, if you're like me, you're wondering, who is William Gaunt? We've got a new television series for you called The Champions. It's exciting and intriguing, but don't take my word for it. Watch this channel soon and find out. Oh, uh, my name's William Gaunt. I play Richard Barrett, one of The Champions. Honestly, ever since I've done my research on this video, I've re-looked into his work, and I have to say, I think he is a very good actor. However, there's just something about him that isn't quite clicking with me. 
when I look at William Gaunt, even though I will admit I think he's a really good actor, he hasn't got that certain X factor. He hasn't got that certain thing I think that's really making him a standout movie star. But again, based on my research and evidence, he was the clear favourite they were going to pick. So I'm going to imagine here that they have decided that William Gaunt will be the replacement following Diamonds Are Forever and William Gaunt is the new James Bond in Live and Let Die. So, Live and Let Die comes out and how well does it do? Well, honestly, not as good as what it did do in our timeline. The thing is, when it comes to Live and Let Die, even though I think probably people will agree that it was a good film, people really feel William Gaunt hasn't got the right charisma, hasn't got the right it to be a movie star. They're just It's just not clicking with people. The other thing is, William Gaunt's style would tend towards more what Sean Connery started. So people will be making comparisons saying you're just really copying Sean Connery, you're not really making the character your own. It's just another sort of lower material Sean Connery. But people have in general accepted that there is a new actor playing James Bond and they want to go ahead and make more films. So the next film obviously would be The Man with the Golden Gun. This time obviously not starring Roger Moore, starring William Gaunt. And that film is a complete disaster. It's just an absolute charismatic disaster of a film, even worse than what it was if it did have Roger Moore. People, even though they were willing to give William Gaunt an extra chance, are just not clicking with this actor. They're just finding him not so charismatic. They're not finding the films as good as they used to be. They feel they're just copying what they used to do and they're really starting to question should this series have gone in the 1960s? Is Bond a relic of the 1960s? Because every time now they've tried with a new actor, it's just not having that same magic as what it did with Sean Connery. It's just copying what Sean Connery did. And people are really starting to pick up on this. Now when it comes to the spy alum, we obviously got to take into consideration here the breakup between Albert R. Broccoli and Harry Saltzman. For those of you who don't know, Harry Saltzman made a lot of investments that didn't really pay off. He was starting to come bankrupt and he had to sell his shares of E.ON to United Artists. But they decided, because Cubby Broccoli is such a gambler, they were going to do one really big roll of the dice because they had two films under their belt that weren't doing so well. They needed to go all out on the next film. There was a consideration and discussion. Do we recast William Gaunt because he's not quite clicking with the audiences? However, he has three films in his contract. They decide to go with it and stick with him. And so they released The Spy Who Loved Me with William Gaunt still as James Bond. How did that film turn out? Honestly, I think it would have been a lot better received than Live and Let Die, The Man and Gone Gun. But I feel still very strongly people would still be saying the exact same thing. The film is great, but the Bond is just not clicking. You can't really understand it, but people are just going on again about this is just a very bad imitation of Sean Connery. It's just not having the same appeal. And Spy Love Me, even though it is a success, it's barely just a success. And the decision is made that now is the time for William Gaunt to leave the franchise. So everybody, we're at a big junction here. We've now had three actors play James Bond. Two of them have not worked with the audiences. The, the series is on real danger levels here. We're on the brink of it being cancelled. There's a real panic and sense, what are we going to do with the next one? We've now, you know, we've got to do something new, we've got to do something different. So the decision is, we're going to have to go even more out in the next film coming out. Obviously at this point, to quote Albert R. Broccoli, to go on the Star Wars fan base, we're going to do Moonraker, James Bond, out into space. Am I the only one here that's seeing real danger signals with him saying that? Because remember, we're science fact not science fiction. So we need a new actor. This is now going to be the fourth actor to play James Bond after one success and relatively, let's be fair, I'm afraid, two failures. So who's it gonna be? Who is gonna be that next actor to take on James Bond? Who's gonna hopefully be the actor to save the franchise, be the new lead of the franchise? Well, I believe at this point they would have gone to their regular favorite, Michael Billington. Michael Billington obviously played Anya Masova's boyfriend, the Russian agent in The Spy Who Loved Me. He's a really good actor, he's got some lot of great credentials and does has done some amazing work in his career. I would also strongly recommend everybody, go check out his work. You are in for a good treat if you love great performances. So with all of that, they have cast now Michael Billington a favourite of Cubby Brockers for a long time as James Bond, starring in Moonraker. Everybody, this film is one of the biggest disasters in film history in this timeline. 
The thing that made Moonraker work so well is because it was a Roger Moore Bond film. If it was any other Bond in the franchise, it would not have worked in any way, shape or form. And it would have shown here. The fact that Roger Moore's James Bond was a bit more, let's not take it too seriously and have fun with it, allowed Moonraker and allowed you to suspend your disbelief of going more into space and having big laser fights. But Michael Billington's acting is not like that. Again, it follows the Sean Connery style. So you've got a Bond actor who's very serious and sort of very hard and gritty in one of the most ludicrous over the top, but I have to still say incredibly fun, James Bond films out there. And it's not meshing, it's not meshing and it's a complete disaster again. And this time, this film, which has the biggest budget of any Bond film today, loses money. This is the end of the franchise that Cubby Broccoli and Harry Saltzman started. United Artists decide we can't invest more money into the Bond franchise. We're just going to put it on hold. It's cancelled. It just doesn't work without Sean Connery is the belief going around. And the film series shuts down. How do I feel about that? Honestly, it's quite upsetting. I feel in this timeline it's sort of maybe proving a point that isn't true, that it's Sean Connery as James Bond, no one else can do it. And I think it's an unfair comment. I don't think the actors they would have chosen in this alternate timeline really would have done the film series justice. I wish in one sense Michael Billington would have been cast for Living Let Die, then it might have been a bit different. And it shows the importance of what Roger Moore did to the franchise. But Cubby Broccoli is heartbroken again at this point. He's put so much time and love and effort into the series and it to go out in such a whimper after 11 films, all that he did, it was just, basically, it's, it's heartbreaking to him. Now, the man carries on working throughout his whole career, works and makes some amazing movies and United Artists still have their rights to the series but just do nothing with it and move on to different things. The Bond franchise is gone, it's dead. Or is it? Cut to 1982. Kevin McClory still has his rights to remake Fundable. It's been a couple of years now since we've had a Bond film. Everyone thinks the Bond series is dead, but he still has his right to remake Fundable. He teams with Columbia Pictures, who have the rights to Casino Royale, to do a two-picture deal, starting with Casino Royale and doing a remake of Fundable, launching a brand new Bond franchise away from Kobe Broccoli and Howard Sultans. United Artists try to fight it, but they can't do anything about it. Kevin McClory has the right. And from these two films, a new James Bond film series is born in a direct comparison to what Albert R. Broccoli and Harry Saltzman started. But that, how that goes, is for another day. Everybody, that is my what if if Roger Moore was not cast as James Bond. I think it's really, really interesting and a very unique look at something. And I, for me, maybe just because I'm biased, it shows how important Roger Moore really was to the James Bond film franchise. But I want to know, everybody, do you have a different opinion on how it would have gone down? Do you see it have gone differently? Do you see it very similar? How do you imagine this whole thing going? I want to know. Comment down below and tell me what you think. As always, everybody, my name's Henry Stevens and I am the Bond Geek. Goodbye.